21st century can help to lead the way. Forging a new path from the prevalent male-dominated society, we need more women in leadership. Now, I know what you must be thinking. I know of many women in powerful leadership positions, and there's an even distribution between men and women. However, in December 2019, women held 36 of S&P 500 CEO positions. That is only 6%. That is not enough. While it's likely that the men on that list deserve their positions, I also know that women deserve to be there as well. Female leaders are unable to prove themselves to be shortlisted for these roles, and women in managerial positions often fear being undermined by their male counterparts when they are the authority figure. This isn't evident in every part of society, but it's still there, whether it's implicit or explicit. Women hold 56% of the global labor market. This shows a 56% showing systematic restrictions on female employees' abilities to move vertically in these companies. So let's look back at our history as modern industrialized communities and how have we viewed women in positions of power. At a glance, you'd expect the positions of women to be almost non-existent. However, when you delve into specific communities, you start to understand their importance. Here you have Mary Curie. She worked alongside her husband, Pierre, and they were 19th century, highly decorated chemists. She was able to show that women can work alongside men, but at the same time, she still had key characteristics such as determination and perseverance, which is key to any social change or business transformation. Forbes has reported that female leaders consistently take a broader view beyond economic control, and more onto societal impact. This idea could come from the notion that female leaders have a softer touch or a maternal instinct that their male counterparts just lack. However, I believe that we should challenge the validity of these responses and not judge leadership skills based on gender identity, on male or female, rather on the individual's characteristics. The Harvard Business Review has reported on the glass cliff phenomenon, where female leaders are consistently put in a place of crisis when a firm is in trouble. They take on this role and they're tasked to do this because consistently before, during, and after a crisis, they have been shown to work better than their male counterparts. This is shown and is evident in Jacinda Ardern, the Vice President, sorry, Prime Minister of New Zealand. She's been able to show that you can put kindness at the forefront of your agenda. And with that, she's been able to tackle key roles and issues such as climate change and the pandemic. And arguably, she's been able to tackle these better than her male counterparts. She's proved to her peers and, most importantly, to her people that she is the person for the job. Another great example of this is Kamala Harris, the first female vice president of America. She's been able to diversify her political system, showing aspiring leaders coming next that you can do it just like her. And that's why looking to the future, I see it as being very, very bright. And I don't share the pessimistic view of it can only get worse from here, because I believe it can only get better. We've seen this time and time again. So with the pandemic, we've seen exponential growth. Why can't we use that same momentum for this task as well? And because of that, women in the 21st century can help 
चली तो है